thank you to each and every one of you who subscribed, liked and watched my previous videos. It really means so much to me. I know that 1,000 subscribers doesn't seem like such a big deal but it's the first concrete milestone for me and I think that deserves a mini celebration. Can I just say how blessed I feel right now? The most apt description that I'm feeling right now I think would be warm fuzzy and I'm just really excited to continue my YouTube journey with all of you. I think that it's incredibly important to enjoy the process and the journey towards your goals and I've already learned so much about YouTube and definitely had the chance to deep dive into my areas of interest and expertise. To me, a big part of why I'm doing this is so that folks can really benefit from my expertise and experience. So I do hope that all the content and templates that I've put out there so far have been helpful. Alright, let's get right to these questions. First up, we have a question from Tuan Sihan. Do you think Google spoiled other working environments for you? Okay, Google definitely spoils its employees, which is what I love about them. They really make sure that you are comfortable in pretty much any other aspect of your life. Food is provided to you for breakfast and lunch and even dinner sometimes and they really take it seriously. Need to exercise? The gym is on site and you're free to go anytime during the day. Mind you, this is a legit gym with treadmills, weights, and they even have a studio for bar and yoga classes. I even went back on the weekends last time to kind of save my money on, you know, signing up for fitness first. But back to the question, these to me are more perks than anything. Even though I was provided with food credits, free drinks, and snacks at TikTok, things still didn't feel the same. Even now, at my new workplace, we have minimal free stuff and play areas. Thank god we have a coffee machine because I do need my caffeine to function. No free snacks or any fancy stuff like a game room, ping pong table or whatnot, but I personally don't need it. After my experience, I found out that you know what I want from work now is an employer who invests into their employees, understands and respects and supports them. Like there's this element of innate trust. They trust me to get my work done on time and if I do need to go out to do something personal or run errands, there are no questions asked, you know, just, just kind of give the team a heads up. And my current job scope is perfect for me. My manager has already spoken to me about setting goals and developing my career which shows how much they care. And of course, people are nice and smart which is a huge added bonus and plus the culture at my current company even after one month, I can safely say is... <laughs> Okay, I guess we have like a sub follow-up question. If Google required you to be less specialized in your work and TikTok was more organized with their work, given the choice, which one would you go back to assuming you didn't have your new job? Hands down, I'd go back to Google. Perhaps I'm too used to everything there. It's weird, I felt like I just left Google and TikTok was somewhat this misty dream that kind of sort of happened but it didn't as well. I, I'm just really glad that I learned more about employer branding and my greatest takeaway from TikTok are my colleagues and now friends. I wouldn't go back to Google at this point of time though. I left for a reason and that reason hasn't changed. I wanted to see what else there is in the corporate world and I still do. I learned so many best practices from Google. I feel like I could use my skills to help build up and implement things. Plus the challenges I'm facing here are somewhat different so it's exciting. Given the size of my current company, it's pretty small compared to Google and TikTok. I think it's easier to connect with people, influence them, and make impact. So I'm really excited on that piece. But who knows, one day I may end up going back to Google, but that's a story for the future. On to question two. Um, this was sent by This Is Arika. In a video, you talked about one of the reasons for leaving your role at a company because it was affecting your creativity as a person. Just wondering if you can elaborate on that and what signs you noticed regarding this. Thanks and congrats on 1K. Well, thank you for that and thanks for your question, Arika. Um, work takes up like 60 to 80% of your time in a day, right? And when you start the day, you literally have like 100% battery. And then as the day progresses, you go through meetings, work on projects, and by maybe 5.30, you're mentally exhausted. Actually, it happens even earlier for me. By the time you get home or officially close your laptop, your brain just wants to switch off and rest and essentially rot and do nothing. Like you just don't want to use your brain power. Added to that, 
Joining a new company is never easy. Lots of new changes happening, new protocols and processes to learn, new people to meet. So it's even more tiring. But the worst is when you're feeling unhappy, it just takes a toll on your mental health. You keep complaining, questioning yourself, and all that energy that could be used for creation is instead channeled towards these negative feelings. So my battery tank was literally just drained out every day. I tried to have the discipline to take action, but somehow I always found an excuse to stop. Um, I just didn't have the tenacity or grit to push through anything my brain found hard or tough. I was going to the gym regularly, but I still felt pretty lousy overall. So it goes to show, you know, feeling lousy about something in your life, whether it's work or personal, it's really all interconnected. So to all of you watching, please take care of both your physical and mental health. Prioritize it. I can't stress how important it is to take care of your health. Be brave and make choices that make you happy. Okay, third question is from Yu Zhen on any tips to keep millennials engaged with their role? Let this ama millennial give you some advice. Kidding. Still young. Young at heart, at least. I hope I'm not stereotyping. Maybe I am. But I personally feel that millennials and Gen Zs for that matter, we all need to have a purpose in life. If you don't know Maslow's hierarchy of needs, here it is. Basically, I think most millennials who are holding a job in Singapore or wherever you are in the world probably already have hit the four foundational stages of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Again, this may not be the case, I am assuming, right? Therefore, most millennials are busy trying to reach their potential to find their purpose in life and fulfill it. My advice is really to find your why and try to align your career with it. I'll share my situation as an example. My current job allows me to interact, mentor, and coach students, and this is in line with what my purpose is. Whatever I learn from my experiences at work, I'm also able to transfer it and create content with my learning, so it's a win-win. You know, be intentional. Instead of going through the everyday motions of doing, 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 take a step back and reflect and think through your life. How can you plan it purposefully so that everything you do kind of helps aspects of your personal and professional life? Hope that helps. Alright, question 4. How's the diversity culture, e.g. LGBT acceptance, like in companies that you work for? So I would say it was great at Google and also good in my current company. In terms of how the company takes care of us as employees and our partners, it really works on a basis of trust. I simply had to put my partner down as a dependent and they were willing to cover my partner, no questions asked. There are also pride ERGs in both companies, so I always felt feel supported if, if I need that support, I guess. Uh, for TikTok, it was, it was okay, I guess. Insurance-wise, and caveat, this is only for Singapore, there was no coverage for partners of the same sex. So only if you're married to a member of the opposite sex, then your partner could be eligible for benefits from the company. Let me say though, uh, I didn't feel any sort of discrimination towards me during the time I worked at all three companies. So it's very nice to see that all companies are getting more and more progressive in that sense. Slowly but surely, we will get there. Next question, I think this was a long one um, from James T. Something I found interesting was where you highlighted the difference in culture from Google being a Western company and ByteDance being an Eastern company. Given you live in Singapore, even though you worked at a Western company, are you saying that ByteDance is so different in culture again from Singapore culture given they're both Eastern? Would you perhaps consider another Western company or do you consider that to be too great a leap? Great a leap, not great. <laughs> Thanks for the question, James. You know, I think workplace culture is pretty different from country culture, so we can't compare these directly. I think Singapore has its own unique culture and we're pretty diverse. And our culture is pretty different from China or the US. However, when we work at a company, I think the way we think and work is influenced by some of each company's principles and values. Even as a Singaporean working in these companies, I will bring in some Singaporean culture with me wherever I go. Personally, to me, whichever company is out there, I need to find out more and understand how each country's working style influences their workplace and then assess whether I can envision myself working there with that sort of culture. I'm not sure about the way French, British and Swedish folks work, but I wouldn't limit myself. So yeah, I hope that kind of dissected and answered your question. Right, on to the next question. Uh, number six. 
Congrats on the 1k, Jamie. Would you be able to share your next move or direction after leaving the previous company? So I've got a video planned on where I moved to, so stay tuned for that piece. All I can say now is that I'm incredibly happy with my choice to move. Absolutely no regrets. Okay, maybe one regret, but it outweighs everything. I'll share more in a future video, so make sure you're subscribed. And one last bonus question. Is this male or female? Well friends, shall we help Rex and a few others out there? Let me declare once and for all, I am a girl. <laughs> so hope that clears the record. In all honesty, I don't blame folks for being curious because hey, I mean look at the way I dress, look at my hair. But if you've watched an entire video and you know that's the only question you have, then... Well alright, that's it. Um, that wraps up this video and thank you for sending through all the questions. I hope that you know I was able to answer them and give you some insight as to what I was thinking about. I'm continuously working on more content in the meantime, so please give this video a thumbs up for the algorithm and consider subscribing if you want to see more content like this. Thanks all once again, very very grateful for all the support and yeah, I'll see you all in the next video.